Hey, everybody. How's it going? Today, I have a very large favor to ask all of you. This is a big ask, but it would help me a lot. And with the size of my audience, I think that if even 1% of my audience were to help me with this, I would be able to achieve something really amazing. So what I said I was going to seeking out to do a few months ago is I wanted to kind of work on the basic framework of an industry trade association. And I wanted to really try to drill down on making things easier and simpler for people who were looking to enter the field, as well as also advocate on our behalf. One of the s small segments of that is making it easier for people to do what we do. So what many franchises will do is they'll write manuals to try to improve their own employees or train their own employees to do something in a manner that they know that works and is repeatable. But what they often do once that is finished is they will only have that for internal use. I would like to create something similar, but that is useful across the board, whether you work here you work in another business, or if you're just somebody sitting at home that wants to fix their own stuff. And I'm starting that by creating a troubleshooting guide for MacBook board repair. So I'd like to show you what I have going on here. Here at wiki2.rossmangroup.com, it goes to this, I haven't even configured it with a logo yet, but it's just a basic page with just basic standards and that, that would help for people who are trying to start this type of business. But what I'm really looking for help for is on these other pages on the side. So I have a page that's here says how to clean a motherboard. A while back, I realized that a lot of people were sending me boards that they destroyed in their ultrasonic cleaners. So I had customers that were stores that would send me boards and I talked about it poorly, admittedly, in this old video of mine. Most people really have no concept of how to use an ultrasonic cleaner properly, and they were destroying the boards. So I put together this page, which needs a little bit of work, a little bit of editing, so that people understand how to f properly clean them. I also created a visual inspection guide. So one of the things that I go over is that new people is most new people tend to overly intellectualize problems when working on the motherboards. They will spend an hour trying to, de you know, reverse engineer how a circuit works when it's just, that looks broken, fix it. And then later on, you will figure out what it does. So I've created a guide to visual inspection. Some of you pointed out some of the Air Force's guides with regards to visual inspection of corroded and oxidized components. And it's great, but it's not really specific to our industry. So here I created a guide. So I was showing you different probe points, what they look like. As you can see, I use Microsoft Paint because, well, that, that, that's while I know how to use. And uh, here I was pointing out how there's green corrosion underneath a chip over here so you could see the full size. I'm trying to teach people what green dust looks like underneath a corroded BGA. This BGA actually did wind up having bad pads under it. I show you what uh, you, you may think that after ultrasonic cleaning that you're good, but I really go over how to tell that this joint is bad and is going to fail again. I want to teach you how to tell what, how to notice what that looks like. I also want you to know what probe points matter and which ones don't. This probe point here obviously matters because it is on the way to something. This probe point over here doesn't matter because this chip has already gone to this capacitor before it hits the probe point. I also go over some other basic pieces of visual inspection of something that if you're new, you may look at this and think, this looks fine, but then upon closer inspection, you see that the solder joints are falling apart. So I'm trying to teach people how to tell, simply by looking at a board, even without a microscope, when there are problems so that they don't have them come back for warranty. But the part that I really need your help with here, and the part that hopefully if you've managed to listen to me ramble for this long, uh, you'll be willing to help me with, is the troubleshooting guide. So on the page, if you click troubleshooting guides, you will see that I have for MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, I've listed a bunch of different models. And if you click on one of them, you'll see, let's just take the 2015 to 2017 13-inch MacBook Air. On the left, I have problems. And on the right, what the potential solutions are. So for instance, no PM Sleep S4L is missing, 2324 milliamps. U1950 is corroded uh, by the PP3V42 via. Corrosion on probe points for SPI ROM U6100 area. Bad clock chip. Corrosion on the pull-up resistors. Uh, if you remove R8111 and PM Sleep S4L comes back, it's most likely a dead CPU. For no backlight, it tells you, okay, if it's this voltage, this is what it is. If you have no power, PP bush D3 hot is 4 volts instead of 8.5. Uh, you know, I try to go through as many issues issues as I can. Uh, no green light on charger. I'll give you what all the different issues could be over here. 
and as well for the MacBook Pro, I also do that same thing. So let's just take an A1706 touch bar. I'm going over all the different issues that occur and what could possibly be causing them. And the whole idea here is to take the contents from my MacBook board repair videos, of which there are many, and take the content from these videos and inject it into easy to view flashcards so that you don't need to go through 600 or 800 or 1000 hours of content to fix a board. I want it to be like a basic solutions guide. And I want this to be public and available to all. There's a lot of institutional knowledge at my company that's hidden in random notes, that's hidden inside tickets, and that's on post-its, that's on, you know, like little notepad documents, maybe on a text desktop, and that's stuck in our heads. But I want all of this to be put into one centralized place that is accessible by more people. So the ask that I have of you is a great one, but I would highly appreciate it if you just like see what I'm trying to accomplish here and uh, go along with my vision. I want to take every single board repair video that I've ever done, take the problem, and then take the solution, and then put it into these troubleshooting guides on this page over here so that they're available. So for every single board repair video that I have ever done, I want to take the problem, then the solution, and put it in this guide. Further, if you have problems and then solutions that uh, for yourself that are not included in my videos, by all means, contribute them. We also have a lot of stuff here on the forum, which is publicly viewable at boards.rossmangroup.com. There are, yeah, there's 7.3 thousand threads here, and a lot of them have been resolved before, where people have said, oh, I had this problem, here was the solution, and I think it would be great if there was a way to put it all into this wiki. This is an insane amount of work, and if I continue going about doing it myself, it's probably going to take me several years to actually accomplish this. However, if even 1% of 1.3 million people watches the video and then adds the stuff there, realistically speaking, we could have this done within a day. And that's what I'm looking to accomplish. I want this to be something that makes it easier for people to work on these products, regardless of who you are, whether you're a repair shop, whether you're an end user, whether you have a franchise company, I don't care. And I want this to be something that is freely available to all. But I want it to be available in a better format than just here's 600 or 800 videos, you know, best of luck. And uh, that's what I'm looking to produce. Uh, unfortunately, the reality for me right now is that running a business takes up an insane amount of my time. There's This is a very strange phase in our business. You know, like walk-in has gone kaput. Mail-in is going up. There's... Um, you know, there's a lot of organization work that needs to be done here because, well, like after the CBC news piece, we were still understaffed. When the CBC news piece was over, and we weren't understaffed. Then we were thinking of moving, but I couldn't add more people to help with the business because they couldn't fit there. Then there was construction. Then there was moving. Then there was flying around the country for the for the the right to repair hearings. And there was COVID, so I was doing two or three people's jobs while they stayed home. We really haven't had that time to catch up. And I've been trying to spend these past several months to really catch up and get my business in order. And that's been taking up a lot of time. It's been eating up all the time that I would usually use to do board repair videos, and it's eating up the time that I could be using to do this. I would highly appreciate it if you could help contribute to my goal. And one of the things that may benefit is if you add something to this guide that you know that someone else doesn't know, someone else may add something to this guide that they know that you don't know, and then you'll be able to come back to this guide and use it as a reference. My, I hope that as a result of you adding to this guide something that you know, that maybe someone else will add something that you could find useful that will help you fix a product in the future that you would have otherwise called a no-fix. Together, we will be able to do better than all of us individually. And in this industry, there's been this idea that if you share information, your business is likely to fail. When I started doing the videos that I did, a lot of people were telling me, this is stupid, this is dumb, this is unprofessional, you're going to lose business, other people are going to steal the, all your ideas, and nobody's going to ever bring you anything to fix them. I think that I've disproven that time and time again. Our business's growth over the past 7, 10 years has proven over and over and over again that this is not how businesses run. It's not just what you know, it's about what you implement. And above all, it's about increasing the size of the pie, as Eli the computer guy would say, rather than just trying to increase your share. 
Many people don't even know that repair is an option outside of the Apple Store. And now more than ever, we need more repair shops that know what they're doing. And this is a way to get started on that. I'd be humbled and honored if you'd be willing to help me contribute to this guide by either adding what you know or helping me add the content from my videos to the guide so that it doesn't take me until 2023 to finally complete this. Because going through all 600 or 700 of my videos in between running a business and everything else is just not something that I'm able to make happen on my own. Thank you very much. And as always, I hope you learned something and I'm glad to have you as an audience. I'll see you in the next video, as will Mr. Clinton, who has added nothing to this guide. Selfish bastard. Doesn't even pay rent. See you later.